Everybody's looking good today. Can we get up for this amazing worship team? Come on, show them some love. Do an absolutely incredible. I'll share a little bit about the video that we just shared, but first I just want to start off just saying, what's up? It is so good to be here. If, you, if you're wondering, you've been a long time since you've been to church and you're wondering what that peaceful feeling that you're feeling right now in the house of God, that's just the Holy Spirit letting you know you're in the right place at the right time. Come on, you believe that? My wife, Kristen, and I, uh, she's here with me. Come on, we celebrating 18 years soon. Come on, somebody, let's go. Yeah. We got four kids, and y'all pray for my youngest son. Hopefully, he finds Jesus today, but he's seven. No, he's a good kid, but I just want to start off by saying what an honor it is to be a part of this house, to be a part of this family. We love you guys so much. We especially, we love our pastors so, so much. How many love your pastors? Come on, can you show them some love? That's like a golf clap. Come on, can we honor our pastors this morning? Love you guys so much. Don't take this lightly. It's an honor to serve the vision that God has put in your heart and to serve this house here together. We love you, love your whole family. And how many know, we're, if you're, it doesn't take long to hang out at Hope City to realize that God is doing something special. Would you agree with that? Come on. Oh, come on, y'all gotta get louder than that. Come on, are you, you agree with that? So we love you. Thank you, thank you for the honor to be here today. And, and uh, he's gonna hate me for doing this, but I do wanna, Pastor Daniel did so well. I wanna honor my father here today, my best friend my hero. I love you so much. In fact, what I'm teaching today um, is uh, you showed me the example of what to do. And you'll understand what I mean when I want to preach about it here in a second. I am who I am today, my family, because of you, buddy. Thank you. I love you so much. Love you so much. You got a chance to see that my daddy Played 10 years in the NFL and a very, very successful all-pro tight end for the Oilers, the Rams. And, uh, but the biggest win he ever had is he taught me the game of life. And he taught me how to love Jesus. And for the last 30 years, and I've been with him for the last 16 years, we've had the honor to go to the Super Bowl and uh, interview the Christian athletes there. And, you know, uh, somebody's got to do the work of the Lord, you know what I'm saying? But... Um, we had the honor to go there and we put together a program that airs on multiple Christian networks and wanted to put a piece together here for, uh, but we have also, just so you know, and this is just through the generosity of Hope City, our family's had a prison ministry for 40 years. That is gonna go to hundreds of prisons all around America. Come on, bringing the hope of Jesus into every prison. Come on, somebody, are you with me? How many know Jesus meets us in every street and every prison from neighborhoods to nations? As the community pastor, I have the honor to oversee missions. My wife and I are an incredible team. And uh, I just want you to know, because of your generosity, I think we're all aware of the earthquake that hit Turkey and Syria. And I just want you to know, because of your generosity, we're working with our global partners. We got boots on the ground, and we'll have more information soon. But can I tell you right now, from Houston, Texas, Hope City, because of the way you give from neighborhoods to nations, we're making an impact and we're gonna bring the hope of Jesus to hundreds of families over there that were affected by the earthquake. Come on, Hope City, give yourselves a hand on that. Come on, can you do that? Amen. One more time, who's glad to be in church today? Come on, you with me? West Houston, make some noise, yeah. How about our Katy campus? Come on, make some noise right now. Come on, y'all join me on my Katy campus. Let's go. Woodlands, that's up. Hey, by the way, Woodlands Campus, you don't know this, today is our campus pastor, Pastor Andy's birthday. Come on, show us some love. We love you, man. I love Pastor Andy. There ain't nothing I wouldn't do for him and nothing he wouldn't do for me. So we do a lot of nothing for each other. You know what I'm saying? It's a good thing. Come on, doesn't it just feel good to be in the church today? Come on, amen. Anybody come ready for the word of God? Where you at? Can I get a yell? I want you to get ready to come because we about to watch a game, the Super Bowl. People go crazy. They, people like paint their body going wild. It's like, woo! It's amazing how we come to church and we get that two by four disease. And we're like, but I know this if they can shout over the game of football, how much more can we come into the house of God? Amen? And we shout in worship, we shout in the word. Are y'all ready? Can I get an amen? Amen. Let me pray. Jesus, Holy Spirit, do your thing. Amen. And give it up one more time. Can we do it? 
Pastor Tim did it last week, so I thought I can do a short prayer. One more time, give it up for God's Word. Can we do that? God is good. It is the Super Bowl, and uh, I thought I'd share a little bit uh, about some fun Super Bowl facts with you. Um, how many love to eat? Come on, somebody. Anybody love to eat? Let's go. In fact, you can wrap the Barber family up in three words, Jesus, food, and sports. Let's go. It's pretty simple. Here's some fun facts. This is going to happen today. It says that 1.3 billion wings will be eaten. Woo! Come on, how many of you love some good wings? Let's go. Got some lemon pepper wings. Let's go. Today, there's going to be 10 million pounds of ribs eaten. Come on, who's smoking some ribs? Where you at? Yeah, we coming to your crib, bro. You didn't know. Party at your house. <laughs> Come on, love me some good ribs. Today, there's going to be 11.2 million pounds of chips consumed. Why? Because 139 million pounds of avocado is going to be eaten. Where's my guacamole fans in the house? Wave at her, brother. Yeah. We love to eat. Come on. I love Jesus. I love his church. And man, I love some good food. Let's go, right? And I know you've kind of everybody made their predictions and all that. And I just know about the Chiefs or the Eagles or where they're still for the commercials. But I do know this, and the Bible talks about a face of God is an eagle. So I don't know if that means anything, but, but maybe eagle fly, eagle flies. I don't know. It might be my prediction here today. But I'm excited about God's Word. You ready for God's Word? Come on, why don't you turn in your Bibles with me. Go ahead and put a bookmark in uh, Acts chapter 1. And then also a bookmark in 2 Timothy chapter 1. I'm going to get there in just a moment. I have the honor to continue our uh, series on evidence. How many enjoyed Uncle Tim, Pastor Tim, last week? Come on. You do amazing. Talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to walk different. You're going to talk different. Am I right? It was a great kickoff to evidence, and we're so thankful for him. And I want to read the theme scripture for our series. It's found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. It says this, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Everybody shout faithfulness. Verse 23, gentleness, self-control. The fruit of the Spirit is all these things. How many could use some of that in your life? Come on, anything that was just read. The heart behind this series is, are people around you seeing the evidence, and is God seeing the evidence of your walk with the Lord? Living a life filled with the evidence of being in God's presence. So I don't know about you, but everywhere I go, I want to be a light in a dark place. Come on, anybody with me? And people, if I hang around them, they should notice that there's something different about that Brandon guy. There should be an evidence of my walk with the Lord. What I want to talk to you about today is faithfulness. In fact, if you're taking notes, you can write the title of this message down as this, faithful. Everybody shout faithful. faithful. I want to talk about the power of being faithful. Because many of us, we can have strong faith, but be weak in our faithfulness. And it's when your faith runs at the same pace as your faithfulness, that's when God begins to unlock the fruit and the miraculous things in your life. How many want God's blessing in your life? Come on, show of hands. Where you at? How many believe God can bless you? Not just you, but your whole household, right? And I've met a lot of people who have great faith. But they struggle in being faithful. But if you want God to unlock heaven in your life, faith and faithfulness need to run together. At the end of my life, I don't want the legacy of Brandon Barber and the Barber family to just be, he was a man of great faith. I want to make sure that they look back and they say, he wasn't just a man of great faith and believe for audacious things and for miraculous things, but he was a man that was faithful. No matter the season that he was living in, he was faithful, and he never gave up on God because God never gave up on him. Somebody shout faithful, faithful, faithful. So sometimes I love to take passages of Scripture, really break it down, but then there's sometimes I love to just kind of be a coach. There's points that just rise up in my spirit, coaching points, that I pray just land on your heart today. 
that you're going to leave here saying, you know what? Maybe I was going to give up on that, but you know what? I need to be faithful to see it through because God called me to it. And so some coaching points in, and I am, that's why I love sports. If you're not a sports fan, I promise you're going to connect today, all right? It's all good. But I love sports. One of my favorite things about the game is that it's a, I love halftime. There's something great about halftime. One, I can eat a protein bar and give me a G-Ray. Come on, right? But something about halftime, the great coaches know they don't try to change the whole game plan. But at halftime, they come in and remind you what you already know so you can hit the second half of the field better and you can win the game. So my heart behind this is just to be your coach today. I don't know what life has you in. I don't know your story right now, but I'm believing in Jesus' name. When you leave here today, you're going to hit the game of life and the field of life, and you're going to leave here stronger and better and more faithful than you ever have. Because what God has promised you, he said, I will complete it and exceed your expectation. Come on, are you with me? We might need to make some adjustments, but we're going to hit the second field of life here today better. So my first thought to you is this, when it comes to living a life of being faithful, is number one, if you want to write this down, faithfulness puts you on the draft board. Faithfulness puts you on the draft board of heaven. Now, every single one of these athletes playing in the Super Bowl today, they cannot play in this game without first being on the draft board. They were in college because of their gifts and their talent and their skill. They were thrown up onto the draft board a team took notice, drafted them, they got on the team, and then they were used, and here they are playing in the biggest game, one of the biggest dreams that they have in their heart. Everybody's got a purpose. The Bible says in Jeremiah that he knew you before you were even in your mother's womb. He gave you a purpose, he gave you a future, and he gave you a hope. I've heard our pastor share this, and I was in the room when Jalen Hurts of the Eagles shared this, and he said, hey, God gave me a purpose way before anybody else had an opinion. I was like, go ahead and preach, Jalen. Something about them Eagles, I'm just saying, I don't know. Somebody shout, I got a purpose. Come on, shout it like you mean it, I got a purpose. You got a purpose, you got a destiny, you got a dream in your heart. But faithfulness puts you on the draft board of heaven. I would show of hands. How many want to be used by God? Come on, where you at, Katie? Where you at, Willens? You want to be used by God. What are you doing to get heaven's attention to get on the draft board of heaven to say, yep, I want to be used by you, God? What are the qualifications? And that brings me to Acts chapter 1. The context of the story is Team Jesus, also known as the 12 Apostles, how many would agree it's kind of a big deal and an honor to be on Team Jesus? Come on, anybody? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, yo, let's go. The best team, the winningest team. And so it's called the Apostles of Jesus Christ. There was 12 of them. Now we're going to read about an apostle that some of you maybe never even heard before because there's only one scripture mentioned about him. It's a guy by the name of Matthias. And here they are in the scene. Jesus has already died, raised him from the dead. He's already ascended to heaven. They encounter the Holy Spirit in the upper room. And then all of a sudden, Peter stands up and he remembers a prophecy in, the, in Psalms by King David that, hey, this is going to happen and they don't have a complete team. A complete team is 12, but they only got 11 because Judas betrayed them, committed suicide. So now they don't have a complete team. Jesus just launched a vision called the local church to reach the world with the hope of his message. And he's saying, I can, we can only be effective if we are a complete team. So they're saying, hey, we need one more person to be a part of the apostle of Jesus. And then Peter stands up, and I'm going to read it here in chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. He says, go out and find me somebody that meets these qualifications. Look what it says. We're going to kind of paraphrase it for you. It says in verse 21, are you there? Can I get a yeah? yeah. Verse 21 Therefore, Peter says, go find me someone that of these men have accompanied us from the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Find me somebody who was there in the beginning of the baptism of John when Jesus was baptized to the day when he was taken up from us. It must be somebody that was a witness of his resurrection. He said, I need you to get out there and find me someone 
Somebody that's been with me from the beginning all the way to the end. Somebody that was with Jesus all three years through the ins and outs, the ups and downs, the mountains and the valleys. Find me somebody who was there from the beginning of John the Baptist and somebody who was there when he rose from the dead and he was risen up to heaven. Find me that somebody. And they went out and searched and actually fell on a guy by the name of Matthias. It doesn't tell us anything else about him. All we know is those qualifications what made him qualify to be on Team Jesus. But notice what qualified him. It wasn't how good he could preach. It wasn't how good he could sing. Y'all ever met somebody who think they sing good? And they're like, no, please hum. You know what I'm talking about? Don't look at him. I didn't say look at him, right? But it wasn't how good he could sing. It wasn't how good he could preach. It didn't matter how much money he had. It wasn't his title status in the world. It wasn't how big his house was or how many cars that he has. The only thing that qualified him to be on Team Jesus was simply his faithfulness. He was a man that was faithful. And if you are faithful, God will find you. Somebody shout faithful. You got to be faithful. I don't know about you. There's been times in my life where my faith has been shaken to the core. But even if my faith is shaken, there's one thing that you can't take away from me. You can't take away my faithfulness. You're going to go through seasons. The Bible says you will encounter trials. So when your faith is shaken, the strength that you got is to stay faithful. Keep coming to church. Don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up on your family. That addiction is not going to get you anymore. Anxiety is not in control of you. We still serve a God who is a healer, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Stay faithful. Are you with me? And God says, and Joshua says, that every step that you take, I promise you that very land. Everything that you got is not a mistake. Everything that God has promised you and he has blessed you with, he didn't just give it to you to take it away. He's saying you got it and it is yours. I think about the story about a lady by the name of Hagar in the Bible. The Bible says that she, her dream was to have a child. Then all of a sudden her child, her dream got sick. She laid the baby down because the baby was about to die. She gave up on the dream. The Bible says she walked away. And on her walking away, an angel of the Lord stopped. He interrupted her and said, no, Hagar, go back and look. Your baby ain't dead. It's alive and it is kicking again. Go pick up your baby. And I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but I feel like this in my spirit. That there's some of you here today, you've had some dreams in your heart, you've had some things that you know God has spoken to you, but it's been hard and it's been painful, but today God wants to remind you, this is the year where you go back and you pick up drop dreams. He's saying, it ain't over, you're not done, you still got a future, and you still got a hope. I know it's hard, but just stay, just stay faithful. Don't give up on the thing that God dropped in your heart. That business is for you from God. That ministry is from you from God. Everybody was born an original, but most people die a copy. Be exactly who God called you to be. Be faithful. Because faithfulness puts you on the draft board of heaven. Can I get a good amen in the house? Come on, are you with me? Here's my second coaching point to you is this. Here's this. If you want to see the evidence of a relationship with Jesus, you got to choose to live higher. You got to choose to live different. You can ask all these athletes playing today. They made sacrifices to get to the top game. The Bible says, if you are a follower of Jesus, the evidence of good fruit in your life can't help but be shown. And it's real simple. If you don't see change, you ain't changing. It's simple. And our heart as pastors and your friends is not to come in and like point out all your, your pain or anybody ever that mean Sunday school teacher, like her finger was like six feet long, like you're going to hell. Anybody ever have that? 
And I remember thinking, like, if you go into heaven, I don't want to be there. You know what I'm saying? It's like, because you mean. But our job ain't to point out all the wrong and the pain. But sometimes it is our job as a friend to be your fruit inspector. Where's the evidence of it? And if there ain't change, you ain't changing. So we got to choose to live higher because the Bible says a friend to the world is an enemy to God. He didn't say a friend to people, but a friend to the things of this world is an enemy to God. God said, I'm going to call you to live higher. Everybody say higher. 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 Look, look, Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 13. It says this. This is the promise of the Lord. This is good news, a good place to shout. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Come on, somebody. You will be on top and you will not be on bottom. Then scripture throws in, but, ooh. How many don't like it when the Bible says but? Because you know there's an action right after that. He said, man, I want to do this for you. You're like, yes, Jesus, woo, bless me. Head and not the tail. But if you want that, you must obey the commands of the Lord, the Bible, that I'm giving you today, and here it is, be careful, what does it say, church? To keep them, to be faithful, to be faithful. God gives us, I asked all these athletes, I said, hey, I know you're a first-round draft pick, you're getting ready to play on the biggest game of your life, but you were handed a playbook the first day that you stepped into the field house. If you did not know that playbook, would you be stepping on the game today and playing the Super Bowl? Every single one of them, no matter how talented they are, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurst, they were like, ain't no way I'm on that field unless I know that playbook. But can I tell you right now, in the game of life, friends, God has given you a playbook, and it's called the Word of God. Are you with me? And if you don't know this word, you ain't going to step on the game of life and be successful. You want to win in your marriage? Know the Word. You want to win in your family? Know the word. You want to see a miracle happen and break through through anxiety and depression and addiction? Get in the word. Because the word calls us to a higher place, a higher standard. I know we're talking about football, but does anybody uh, like basketball? Come on, any any basketball fans in the house? Woo, this is great. Got a bunch of basketball fans, and I know we... I know we uh, celebrated a uh, 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 big milestone this week in basketball with LeBron James and becoming the leading scorer in points. And so I don't know if he holds the record for most points scored or most uh, drama plays, uh, but um, he's the greatest, just, just not in the top five. But, um, oh my God, bring it back to Jesus. Come on. Some of y'all are like, man, he was doing good until that moment. But if you know... Everybody plays basketball at at 10 feet. But when you're younger, you start at 6 feet, right, to learn the game. Then you move it up to 8 feet. Then there comes a time where if you want to keep playing the game, the standard height of the basketball goal moves to 10 feet. And if you want to be successful past elementary, you got to learn to play the game at the standard height that it is. If you don't, you'll never make it to high school, you won't make it to college, you won't make it to the pros, and you will not provide for your family. You just won't have a career in it. I don't know if any dads have done this. Don't let me be lonely, because if, if you don't admit this in church, you line up in church. I know you are. But sometimes I got to remind my kids that dad, dad is still the winner. Come on, anybody like, come on, dads, where you at? Can I get, yeah, yeah. Am I right? So have you ever done this? There comes a certain age where you can't dunk or even touch the rim anymore. But now at my age of 42 years old, I just try to get that. You know that one loop that hangs lower on the net than all the rest of it? If I can just hit that, then I'm good. But every now and then, I got to remind my kids and drop it from 10 feet. Got to drop it down to 8 feet. Because now I'm doing 360s on them. I'm doing reverse dunks. They're like, boom, what's up? Screaming at my eight-year-old. Isn't that bad? Pray for me. I got a lot of growing to do. (laughs) Come on. Has anybody done that? Come on. Just wave at me. Come on. Where are you at? You've dropped it down. You just try to be somebody. (laughs) It's amazing to me. Hear me. How we will lower our standards to say yes to a quick feel-good moment. I hope y'all love me after this. 
It's amazing how we will lower our standards saying, God, I believe in everything in this Bible, but that one scripture, oh, it just feels too good. And we'll literally, we'll lower our standards to say yes to a quick fix, to a quick moment. And God is saying, no, a true relationship with Jesus is I'm calling you to a higher standard. And a standard, there's a godly standard of character and integrity and of faithfulness and of holiness and if you don't step up, you'll stay elementary and you'll never get the things that God has called you to run in. He's called you. Are you going to step up and say, hey, God, I'm going to go higher. I'm going to make some changes in my life because we all deal with something. We all have something that we're going through. You got to hit on your life. The enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy if he can get to you, he can get to your marriage. If he can get to your marriage, he can get to your family. He can get to your soul and eventually rob you from heaven. We all deal with something. Even the great David was a great leader, great man, great family man. He was a great athlete. He was incredible. And all of a sudden, the Bible says that he committed adultery. He committed murder. He found himself in a dark place, dealing with anxiety and depression the Bible says in 2 Samuel that he actually walked out one day. He walked out, and then it happened. He walked out, and then it happened. He sinned. Can I tell you right now? We all got an it. You Google it. You DM it. The algorithm shows it. You'll smoke it. You'll drink it. You'll back it up. You'll do whatever, right? Like... Come on, bring it back to Jesus. Right here, right here. Am I lying? Hear me, hear me. Lean in. If you don't handle it, it will handle you. This is exactly how sin works. Sin is like getting hustled. You think you got a deal, but the deal actually got you. We got to step up. Let me tell you right now. I don't know if David had so much of a sin issue as he had a placement issue. The Bible says he went there, and then it happened. There's some of you, if you don't go there, then it won't happen. If you don't go around them, then it's not going to happen. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I feel like I'm talking to somebody. There's some of you in here, you need to go to some of your friends that you think are your friends. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future. You need to look at some people and go, bye. You need to look at some places that you've been going to that is holding you back from the standard of the man of God and the woman of God that he's calling you to be, and you need to go, bye. And when your friends don't understand and your family doesn't understand and people don't understand, you're like, that's all right. God is calling me to a higher standard. He's calling me to a different place. If you want to come with me, you can. And I know, I know that I said I'm going to do it right before. But this time, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be faithful. Come on, are you with me? Got to choose to live higher sooner or later. You got to choose humility and holiness. Saying, God, some things I love, but I love you more. And I trust you. I'm going to give it up because you've called me. And I'm going to be faithful to it. Amen? Here's my next coaching point to you. My next coaching point is this. You got to stir it up. Somebody shout, stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. This is one thing you won't see happen in the game today. And if you're a coach in here, a player, you know this, man. Sometimes you just got to call a timeout. Sometimes you just got to call a timeout and remind somebody. If you ever come out there, one day you say, all of a sudden, I've been a coach for my life, and I was a coach before I became a pastor and in ministry. And tell you right now, there's sometimes you're like, what were they thinking? That play was horrible. Are they stuck on stupid? What's going on? Come on, anybody with me? Like, you've seen that. Sometimes you got to call time out and be like, yo. <laughs> like, hey, come on. I know it's in you guys. We can still win this game. If there's still time on the clock, then that means there's still time for a comeback. This game ain't over. Sometimes you got to stir it up. Somebody shall stir it up. 
Now think about this scripture, 2 Timothy 1, verse 5 and 7. It says this. When I call to remembrance, maybe that's my job today is just to remind you the genuine faith that is in you, which first dwelt, I love this, in your grandmama and in your mama. Come on, how many thankful for a praying mama and a praying grandmama, right? Here it is, lean in. And I am persuaded that that faith is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to, what does it say? Stir up the faith, the gift of God that is in you. Verse 7, for God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of, help me out, of power and love and of a sound mind. I'll never forget my wife. One thing she hates more than anything is she hates cockroaches. Come on, somebody. Come on, I got anybody just waving if you agree. Come on, right? Especially in Texas, man. They like, I don't know what. It's like an Arnold Schwarzer roach. I don't know what's happening. It's like, they're so big and they fly. Have you ever had one fly at you? How one just go? It's true. But my wife will not touch a cockroach. I mean, she'll literally, if I'm traveling, it doesn't matter how many days I'm traveling, she will leave it under a bowl. She will try to kill it with some hairspray. And I'll never forget one time it happened and, and I was watching through our security camera at home and she like moved the whole living room furniture and she like placed the cockroach like right there. And she was up on top of the couch. She was like, oh, she, she wasn't good. And she did what every good parent does and she called my oldest daughter, Braylon. Braylon! Come here. What up, mama? Hey, bring the dustpan and a bro. Why? It don't matter. Just get here. I'll never forget. My daughter comes walking in. And she goes, what is it, mama? And she goes, there. And when Braylon sees it, she's like, oh, no, mama, no. And my wife, without hesitation, said, no, 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 Braylon. The Lord hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and of a self. You better stir up that faith, Braylon. True story. Quick question. Quick question. Show of hands. Every campus. Katie, Woodlands, West Houston. How many of you felt the touch of God in your life before? Come on, let me see your hand. Come on. There's your evidence. The faith is in you. The question is, what are you going to do to stir it up? This is why you need church. This is why you need a connect group. This is why you need a jump on the growth track and get on the dream team to serve in parking, high five people, serve kids, come to a serve project with Hope City Missions. What do you gotta do to stir it up? Let me tell you right now, it's not waking up, I'm tired. When I'm tired and feeling exhausted, that's when I know that I don't go to church. That's when I tell myself, that's exactly why I need to come to church. My family was spread out everywhere. We had one daughter, my wife, she was in Fort Worth at a gymnastics competition. Then my other one was my dad in North Houston at a volleyball. My son was south in Manville. And apparently we were all over. They got home, praise God. We were exhausted. But there is nothing that stops us from being faithful to get into the house of God. You know why? Because I need my faith to be stirred. This is why something for worship just does it for me. You can't sit in this worship and not feel your spirit stirred to say yes, am I right? There's something about worship, man, that just does something to you. Here's my last thought to you. I want you to stand. We're going to close. Glad you came to church today. I'm going to close with this. Nobody leave. I don't know what you got to do to stir it up. Get around people. Make church a priority more than you ever have. Let me tell you right now, if you if you just give us one year of your life, you go all in, you tithe, you come to church, you serve, and in one year, if your life ain't changed, I'll quit. That's how much I believe in the love of my God and I believe in the power of his church. This is a big family right here. Everybody say, we family. Come on. Here's my last thought to you, my last point. How to stay faithful. Here's why. Because heaven is the end game. Heaven is the end game. What is it worth if you got everything 
in this world that it offers, but you don't make it to heaven. The only thing that can get you to heaven is you. There is a reward to being faithful. You remember our boy Matthias? Mentioned one time in the Bible. The Bible actually shares about the honor of being an apostle of Jesus. In Revelation. You can go and you can read it. And the Bible says that in Revelation that God built the very foundation of heaven on the names of the apostles. Whoo! What an honor. Oh my goodness. Can you just imagine? This is my silly mind and how it works with the illustration, but could you imagine just all the apostles, Matthew, John, Peter, could you imagine the angel work crew? They're up there just like, Matthew. I don't know if that's how they sound or if they skip, but here goes, John. Peter. Hey. Matthias. Yo, who's this? I ain't heard of him. I didn't hear about no miracles. I didn't hear about no 5,000 fish fry. I didn't hear about Jesus. Who's this? Who's, who's Matthias? I know Peter, I know John, Matthew. Like, yo, why does he get this honor? And I can literally see Jesus. Oh, when he hears Matthias, he like, he just lights up. Like, oh, that's my boy. That's my boy. And the angel worker who's like, like, what did he deserve? To be here and get this honor, I can tell you what he deserves, why he deserves it. Peter denied me. These others maybe left me here and there, but the reason why Matthias is here is because he was faithful. He never wavered. He was with me through the ins and through the outs. That's why he's here, because I'm just looking for people that aren't perfect, but just committed. Faithful. I'll tell you right now, even if there's a moment where you've stopped being faithful, Jesus has never stopped being faithful to you. I've been through seasons in my life. We all have, I know. My faith is rocked. Or my family has struggled, my marriage has struggled. I've had anxiety to the place of being curled up in the ball in my house, not knowing what's going to happen. Depression hit me. I don't have time to go into my full story, but literally within minutes and seconds of committing suicide, the enemy tried to do everything he could to take me out. You know what it feels like when the call of God on your life feels like it's going to be this way and then God shifts it this way. The one thing that I'm thankful for, which I share, is my father led it so well. The one strength that I want to say that I can say, I've not done it perfect. But the one thing I can say is that I've been doing my best to be faithful. And I'll never forget a moment with my father. He's being interviewed. He is coming up on 40 years of full-time ministry, about to click 70 this year. Come on. And prison ministry is hard. You got to live by faith. I've seen him do it time and time again. You can try to pass an offering plate in prison, but it don't work too well. You know what I'm saying? But just seeing him live by faith in the call, and somebody asked him, I'll never forget. They asked him, why do you think God chose you? Without hesitation, he said, because God knew I wouldn't quit. Let me tell you right now, I don't know where your marriage is at. I don't know where your, where your family is at. I don't know where your soul is at. But can I tell you right now, stay faithful. God can heal your marriage. God can heal your family. God can set you free from addiction. God can bring that healing to your body. How many believe he's still the healer yesterday, today, and forever? Gotta stay and stay faithful to me because I'm gonna stay faithful to you. Come on, somebody shout faithful. Now with every head bowed and every eye closed, right here, this turns back to you. Everything starts with the relationship with Jesus. Jesus didn't die on the cross to be a part of your top three. He died to be number one in your life. If you're here today, heaven is the end game. Forget who's around you. 
This is you and Jesus. But count of three with boldness. You're gonna say, I wanna live higher. I wanna be faithful. I wanna give my life to Jesus for the first time or I need to rededicate my life. On the count of three, I'm not asking this for a photo shot. Every campus, I'm asking this for you to make a statement with heaven that I wanna be different and I wanna live different. On the count of three, if I'm talking to you, you need Jesus. Hands are already going up. Ready? One, two, three. Shoot it up and keep it up. Come on, keep it up, keep it up. Yep, yep, I see you, keep it up. I see you back there, thank you. Come on, the Bible says when one comes to heaven, all of heaven throws a party. Come on, old city, that's bigger than any Super Bowl. That's bigger than any championship. Come on. Everybody shout this prayer. Every campus, everybody shout, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Today, Jesus, come into my heart. Make me new. Today, I choose to be faithful, to be faithful. Can we just throw our hands up? Come on, how many believe in God for a miracle moment? Anybody need a miracle in there? Come on, everybody, throw your hands up. Come on, throw your, I just wanna pray over you generic, and then we're gonna close with the worship song. Let's finish today strong with lifting our voice and lifting God. Come on, are you with me? Father, I thank you so much for every person that is in the room. I thank you for your healing touch, whatever they walked in here with today, in Jesus' name, that they will find freedom. And because you are faithful to them, Lord God, in Jesus' name, depression is gone. In Jesus' name, suicide is gone. In Jesus' name, healing is gonna take place, Lord God. Their blood will flow the way that it's supposed to flow. Their joints will go back to the way it is supposed to go, God. We thank you for it, and we thank you for your faithfulness, and we thank you for your promise. In Jesus' name, come on, sing it out. Come on, every hand lifted high. Come on, close it out strong today. Give him everything. From the rising sun. From the rising sun to the setting sun. I'll praise your name. From the rising sun to the setting hands open-handed. God, we receive this word, this deposit that you've made in our lives today. And our commitment as we leave here today on the 12th of February, 2023, is that even when we have fallen away, maybe got caught up in the prodigal life, God, today, for week two of the evidence, this is almost like an alignment check that brings us back to center where we can commit today to come back to faithfulness. We want it said of us that we were faithful. Because if you're not the Lord of everything, then you're not the Lord of anything. So we commit today to be faithful. Now, would you just take a moment with your eyes closed, not worrying about anybody around you, as a daughter, as a son, will you just talk to Jesus? Will you just talk to your father? Would you just tell him, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove that. I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna surrender that. I'm gonna abandon that. And I'm gonna keep my focus. I'm gonna keep my attention on you, Lord. We bless you. We honor you.